we open up the software, software pops up, we identify the center of the storm, we drag this box, let's say Crawford County, and it immediately draws a default box. Next thing I'm going to do is identify the storm motion. So I go back in time, you can see the dot, this will be the center of the storm. I'm going to go back in time, find out where the storm was back in time. It changed the path, it changes the speed, forward speed. I then adjust the track, and then I can make adjustments to the box by um, adding, oops, adding a vertex, or expanding, contracting. Let's say I wanted to shrink it like this, or expand, I can do that. And at that point, we're ready. I feel good about the warning, or I can shrink this part. Um, feel good about the warning, I can go through, choose the product type, the duration, let's go 30 minutes or 45 minutes, I can make that decision. Um, type of tornado warning, the basis is this, um, we have different choices, um, public reported, broadcast media reported, confirmed tornado, uh, Doppler radar indicated, which is the most common. I can add hail to it, I can do calls to actions, is this at night, is it rain wrapped, um, is this a large violent tornado, uh, safety rules for mobile homes, etc. And then other case, um, rain, I can add rainfall or information about squall line tornadoes if that is the case. So then I hit create text. Once I hit create text, the text will pop up over on the screen. Supposed to. There it goes. Text box up. This is what you would see as a user um, on your end. And it indicates the time, where it's for, until, uh, what the hazard is, and the source, radar indicated rotation. Um, and you can see here, a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado was located uh, moving east at 20. And that was all based on the information that we just went through. I would hit enter, I would go through, and then I would hit send, and it goes out.